In this video, we've got Avalon King's Armor Shield 9, and I'm going to give you the skeptic's point of view. Pick up. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Turner Mobile Detailing. Like I said at the outset, today we're going to be taking a look at Armor Shield 9 from Avalon King. Now, Avalon King uh, reached out to me a few months ago and they sent me their ceramic coating uh, Armor Shield 9. They asked me to do a review on it, to take a look at it for myself, to try it out. For you guys, I said, sure, I'll take a look at it, give it my honest opinion, and let you guys know if it's worth buying and putting on your vehicle. Now there are a million and one other YouTube videos and reviews about this stuff. So I thought to myself, how could I make my video different than all the rest? And I came up with the idea that I'm going to do a review on this stuff from a professional's point of view. So I'm going to give you some tips and tricks along the way on how to apply a ceramic coating in general. Give you some background as to the differences between a consumer grade coating like this and a more professional grade coating. Uh, one that you have to have a certified installer like myself install for you. You cannot get them as a consumer. And I'm going to give you my honest, unbiased opinion. Yes, there's going to be a link in the description below if you want to purchase this stuff. But I'm still going to give you my honest, unbiased opinion. So if I don't like this stuff, then I'm going to tell you I don't like it. And if I don't recommend it, then I'm going to tell you I don't recommend it. And the inverse is true that if I do like it, I'm going to tell you. And if I think it's worth your money, then I'm going to tell you I think it's worth your money. So without further ado, let's get this package open and see what Avalon King has to offer. Now the packaging right off the bat is very nice. It's very professional, very clean, almost dramatic, I guess you could say. I'm going to say right off the bat that a lot of this stuff is just marketing. You could put lipstick on a pig, paint on a piece of poop. It doesn't make the pig any less of a pig and so on and so forth. So now that's not saying that this stuff is crap. I'm not saying that whatsoever. I'm just saying that packaging, marketing, it's just that. It's just hype. So we have to see if the hype, the packaging, the marketing um, is an accurate representation of the product. So we pull off the sleeve. So we pull off the sleeve and we're going to put that aside. And we're going to open this up. It's almost like opening. And we're going to open this up. It's almost like opening up a jewelry case. Right off the bat, we've got an introductory card. It says, apply, smile, enjoy. Thank you for your purchase. We are striving to make the best ceramic coating with the easiest application, whether you're a DIYer or a seasoned pro. Let us know how it goes. We want to hear your thoughts and see your pictures. Danny and Dave, co-founders. So it's a nice little intro, put that aside. Now they give you like a little card. It's almost like a little credit card type card. Obviously it's not a credit card, but I'll show you in a minute what this is for. And here we have the product itself. So a nice, very clean, very slick looking chrome bottle. Now again, marketing and package design is uh, a big part of getting someone to buy their product. Now I'm going to tell you right off the bat something that I don't care for. Avalon King, you should change this. The bottle is fully opaque. I don't like it when bottles of anything but especially ceramic coatings are fully opaque, meaning you cannot see through them. And the reason I don't like that is because you can't see how much I've got left, especially when I get towards the end of the bottle. I know I've got a little bit left. And uh, if I'm working on a large vehicle like I am today, a full size pickup, and I'm getting toward the end, or I'm say halfway through, I wanna know exactly how much I have left so I know if I have enough to finish or not. And uh, if I know I'm using too much, if I'm using too little, or so on and so forth. So it's not a deal breaker. It's a nice metal. Uh, I think I've read online this is aluminum bottle. So side note, if you buy a ceramic coating that comes in a bottle that's anything less or anything other than metal or glass, throw it away. Uh, don't buy it. Th return it. Um, get your money back somehow because it's garbage. Uh, a ceramic coating needs to come, and I say needs to come, in a metal or a glass bottle because the solvents will slowly off gas uh, or permeate the plastic bottle and it will crystallize and go bad. So a metal 
and a glass bottle or glass bottle I should say is what you want for your ceramic coating that's good for this but again the one detractor is that I wish it was a opaque bottle or a transparent bottle that's a 30 milliliter bottle by the way so we're going to take the packaging apart this is a little bottle holder I need that so now inside we've got our coating removal towel now if you've never installed a ceramic coating or you're just starting to learn about them what a coating removal towel is uh, after you apply the coating with the applicator you wait for it to flash now the flash is the time that the coating takes from the moment that it touches the paint the, you apply it to the, to the surface of your vehicle to the time that it's time to remove it most likely if you're doing this yourself if you're a DIYer you've installed a carnauba wax before a paste wax so it's a very similar concept uh, you apply the paste wax onto the surface and you allow it to haze and then you remove it now let's say it takes three minutes to haze that's your flash time so a ceramic coating is the same concept you apply it to the surface it's not going to most likely haze most coatings don't really haze they kinda some of them turn a little bit of a, a oily rainbow consistency or look to them um, that kinda dissipates over the course of the flash time uh, others do haze just a tiny bit Others don't really do much at all. A lot of your professional grade ceramic coatings don't do much at all. That's why an installer needs training and certification uh, in order to know how to use that product properly because there's not a lot of visual indicators as to when to buff it off or to remove it. So again, the removal towel is to remove the, um, the coating once it's flash time is up. So it's a nice, feels almost like a micro suede, uh, a heavy pile micro suede cloth. So, that's very high quality. I'm impressed with that. And now we have our applicator block. Now this is a pretty standard run-of-the-mill applicator block. It's it's a solid foam. The um, It's about an inch thick, so about seven-eighths of it is solid foam. And then the last one-eighth is a soft foam. That's going to be your applicator side. Uh, don't try to apply it with a hard foam side. You're going to see a logo, Avalon King logo, on the hard foam side. Keep in mind that you always want to see that. You never want to cover that up with your uh, applicator pad or your applicator cloth, I should say. And then on the sides, you're going to see two slits in the applicator block. If you can see them, hopefully my camera is focusing. Um, what that is going to be for is we've got our, uh, these are the gloves. Put those aside for a minute. They give you a package of applicator cloths, sticker. Everybody gives you a sticker. So applicator cloths, open up the package. And here we've got black applicator cloths. They're actually really big. And so we've got our applicator block and the applicator cloth. And what we're gonna do, the long way, you're gonna hold it in your palm the long way and then put the applicator soft foam side down perpendicular to the length of the cloth and then you're going to wrap it like this so it's wrapped around like this so you should have about a quarter of an inch of the top of the block exposed and then we're going to go back to that little credit card thing where to go you're going to use that to push the cloth into those slits that are on the side of the applicator block and then you're going to do the other side you can do it both on both sides and make sure the surface that is covering the application side of the applicator the soft foam side is pretty snug you don't want any slack in that here's our correctly installed applicator cloth on the applicator block you see the the uh, cloth is pressed into those slits on the side of the applicator block on both sides so that's what it should look like again the logo is exposed so you're going to keep that with you I recommend having a detail cart with you at all times something like this preferably something with wheels or if you have a shop or a garage that you have workbenches all around um, you're going to want something to put the ceramic coating your cloths your uh, towels your block on so you're not putting stuff on the ground and it's a lot easier with a rolly cart than it is a little table. Moving a table around is harder than something with wheels. Now this cart, I got it on Amazon for about 100 bucks. It's a fold-up cart, so 
it's easily stored once you're done with it. So I'll leave a link in the description below. So now that we've got our applicator cloth installed, now they do give you a number of cloths. We've got one on the applicator and then there's one, two, so they give you three total. Uh, I've actually brought extra. This is my first time using this particular product, so I'm not sure how long these things are gonna last. What I usually do is I'll usually do like one or two panels with one side of the cloth, and then I'll flip the cloth to the other side, do another one or two panels, depending on the size, so that I kind of get double duty out of each cloth. So now let's get into our instructions a little bit here. We've already gone through, number one is how to wrap the cloth. We've already done that, so number two, is how to apply the coating to the block. Uh, so there's a picture of that right there. Of course, it says to shake the bottle liberally. You want to make sure all the ceramic solids inside the coating, inside the liquid are mixed up properly. It also tells you about your um, prep method. You're gonna get, when you buy this stuff, you're gonna get a couple emails from uh, Avalon King, how to do your prep work, uh, how to make sure your car is ready, your surface is ready to receive the coating. Number one, you're gonna do a strip wash. We've already done that. Uh, we've already done a foam pre-wash and hand wash on the truck. Then we did a, a bug and tar removal after that. And then I did a full iron removal process. Of course, it talks about a clay bar in here. So we did that. I used a clay mitt actually, went around the whole vehicle and clayed the, clayed the truck entirely. Now uh, in here, it talks about polishing is the third step. And normally that's where it would come in. We did do some minor polishing on this truck. Polishing is not necessary. Don't let anybody tell you that it's necessary. The only thing that polishing is good for is if your paint is in really bad condition or even subpar condition. Um, it's a luxury step. It's not a necessary step. So if your car has swirls, scratches, oxidation, whatever, you're gonna to wanna to remove that stuff with a polishing process. Now whatever polish, whatever uh, machine you use, that's totally up to you. That's not what this video is about. If you have a vehicle that's already in really good shape, maybe it's brand new, maybe it's just delivered to the dealership. And side note, if you are using this on a brand new car, maybe you just bought a new car, um, tell your dealer, do not touch it. When it comes into the dealership, don't touch it, don't look at it, don't even breathe on it. Do not let the detail department at the dealership touch your vehicle because they will scratch it. They will put micro marring in it, they will swirl it, okay? You don't want that. If anything, do it yourself or hire a professional to at least wash it if you're gonna do this yourself. But uh, honestly, you don't need to do that. If you're gonna do this yourself, then you can wash your car yourself. I will link a video right up here or here, I forget if to the left or right side, um, on how to properly and safely wash your vehicle. So polishing step, it does not do anything that will help your ceramic coating adhere better or last longer on your paint. All right, so our last step is the IPA wipe down. I used CarPro eraser for this step. That's my uh, go-to when it comes to prep when I use a ceramic coating. Really good stuff. You don't have to use that. You can use um, Gion, I believe it's called prep. You can use an isopropyl alcohol IPA mixture wipe down. Put about um, say 10 to 20 percent of 70 percent alcohol in a bottle and then fill the rest with distilled water and you're good to go. Now, word to the wise, if you are gonna polish your vehicle, you're gonna to wanna to wipe it down with that IPA wipe down or that prep wipe first before you polish, because when you polish, you want the surface to be absolutely clean. Uh, and then you're gonna polish the vehicle and then you're gonna wipe it down again. So you're gonna uh, wipe it down, polish, and then wipe it down again with the IPA. And that's what we did. We wiped the vehicle down after the washing iron removal, clay bar, bug and tar process, all that. And then I polished uh, just a few spots in this vehicle, not everything. It's in good shape already. I didn't feel the need to do everything, but there were some areas that were a little worse than others, uh, little minor scratches, some swirls here and there. So I wanted to take those out and then I wiped it down again. So that makes sure all the polishing oils uh, and whatever residue from the polish is totally gone. And then you're ready for your coating. Now it does say, it's interesting they say this, that's the optimal method, what we just talked about. The simple method, you can just wash and do an IPA wipe down. Now if you do that, A, the coating's probably not gonna last as long because it's not as clean uh, as the optimal method, but also it's probably not gonna look as good because 
nine times out of 10, most people's vehicles have some swirling. You take it through a car wash, a tunnel wash, uh, even wash it yourself using two bucket method, which I totally, I, I don't like the two bucket method. Again, watch that video uh, that I linked a few minutes ago and you'll know why. But most people don't know how to properly wash their car, so they put swirls in it themselves or they take it through a car wash and that puts scratches and swirls and all kinds of imperfections in the paint. So I would recommend the optimal way. If you're going to do a ceramic coating and you're not going to hire a professional, do it right. At least do the steps that we talked about before. Now something else I want to address, something that, that uh, Avalon King talks about on their website um, is that this is you know, relatively cheap compared to having it done professionally. Now professionally, the cheapest coating that I offer, which is uh, System X Crystal, it's a three year coating, no warranty, but it does register to Carfax. I offer that as part of a Ceramic Express package. My cheapest price, I believe, is like 550, something along those lines, and that's with no paint correction, that's no polishing. If you want polishing, it's gonna cost you another around, at least a minimum of about 200 bucks. 150, 200 bucks minimum. You're talking 750, $800 for a three year ceramic coating with no warranty. Now, my point is that they advertise on their website that it's relatively cheap, 70, $80 for a bottle, and you get two bottles for less than 100 bucks. So now, compare that to an over $1,000 ceramic coating. Now, first of all, you're not paying $1,000 for a bottle of any ceramic coating. I don't care how professional it is. The, um, the highest grade ceramic coating that I offer, which is a 10 year coating System X Max, is not going to cost you anywhere near $1,000. What they're talking about is $1,000 for the coating, the prep work, everything that we talked about, the paint correction, all that, which is going to cost you a lot more than $1,000 if you're going with a 10 year coating and all that also, by the way. But you're also paying for the installers or the, the detailers' uh, experience, their expertise, uh, their professionalism, all that stuff, and also not having to go through the hassle or the learning curve and the risk of messing it up in doing it all yourself. You just pay someone else to do it. They know what they're doing. I'll pay the money. Just do it. Right? We've all been there. So that is not something that is communicated clearly from Avalon King. That's another, again, another marketing ploy to tell you, hey, our coating is 70, 80 bucks. Uh, their coating is $1,000, which it's not an apples to apples comparison. So anyway, that's my rant on that. So let's back to our instructions. Step three. So we're going to take the applicator. We've got some product on the applicator. Wipe a thick layer across the car surface, first horizontally and then vertically to ensure an even application. Now, step four, it says continue to spread in a crisscross pattern until you have completely covered the section. Add drops frequently. So typically with a coating like this, we work, we're going to work in a um, two by two or two foot by two foot section. But that's not always translatable to some areas like on a fender. They got curves and there's a big hole for the wheel in a fender. So Two by two squares are not always feasible, so you'll see. I'll show you as we do it. Let the coating sit until it flashes. Iridescent, almost like an oil slick. That's what we talked about before. You'll see like uh, an oil slick, a rainbow effect to the surface. Then remove the residue by lightly buffing with a microfiber towel. Once done, proceed to apply and then buff the coating one body part at a time on the rest of the car. So in one of those emails that I got, after I ordered or after they sent this to me, uh, they did send some detailed instructions. They talk about drying times or this is the flash time that we talked about earlier. So at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius, if you live outside the United States, uh, you're going to wait four to five minutes to buff the coating off. 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, you're going to wait two to three minutes. And 70 degrees Fahrenheit plus, uh, or 25 degrees Celsius plus, you're gonna wait one to two minutes. So as the temperature goes up, flash times go down. It's like anything, if you've ever painted anything before, if you're painting in a warm environment, then the paint is gonna dry much quicker than if you're painting in a cooler or cold environment. Now also, if it's humid, now today is kind of muggy, so uh, humidity is gonna, in my opinion, is gonna drop the flash time a little bit. So it's 84 degrees today, so that means we're going to do about one to two minutes. Now it's kind of muggy, 
So we're going to add a figure, add an extra minute to that. So let's say two to three minutes for uh, 85 degrees and uh, a little bit higher humidity. So now we're ready to start coating. We've got our uh, applicator block set up and, and wrapped, ready to go. We've got our ceramic coating ready to go. Let's just make sure there's no little sealer caps or anything we got to take off. They got a little pop top cap right in here. I don't know if that's really necessary, but uh, it's there. Now our next step is to do a test area. We always want to do a test area. If you've never done this before, or if you're using a product or a coating you've never used before, you're unfamiliar with it, like I am fairly unfamiliar with this coating, um, we want to do a test spot. So that's going to test the flash time. We want to see what the visual characteristics are. We want to see what kind of visual feedback the coating is going to give us as it cures or as it flashes so we know when to remove it and we can work that much faster. Now, here's a pro tip for you. Uh, you may not want to do this if you're not comfortable doing this, but this is something that I do if I use this kind of coating, which I haven't used this kind of coating in a while. Uh, but since you have longer flash times with a consumer grade ceramic coating, a professional grade ceramic coating, the installer, you have literally 10 to 30 seconds to, once that coating is applied, to remove it. Now with a consumer grade ceramic coating, Avalon King, stuff from Gion, stuff from CarPro, um, C-Quartz, stuff like that. Usually, like we said in the instructions, you have minutes, not seconds. So colder temperatures, around five minutes. Warmer temperatures, two to three minutes. So now that gives you enough time to apply the coating and maybe go to your next section or two or three sections ahead. Remember, a section is about two by two. And then by the time that two or three minutes is up, you've applied several sections wait maybe another 30 seconds, come back and buff off the first section, nice and gentle, nice and slow and even, and then work your way over to the subsequent sections. What you can do is set a timer for let's say three minutes in this case, after you apply your first section, and then just keep going. Go two by two area, put some more drops, two by two area, put some more drops, and just keep going until that timer goes off. Now once that timer goes off, maybe wait another minute, 30 seconds, like I said. Now, here's another pro tip. A lot of times these flash times on consumer coatings are not hard and fast. You could probably come back an hour later and still buff it off. It'd be a little bit more difficult, but you could probably still buff it off. Where a professional grade coating, you come back an hour later, the only way you're gonna remove that coating is to polish it off. You need some sort of abrasive. But consumer grade coatings, much easier to work with, much more user friendly. That's why they're consumer grade. You don't need certification or anything like that. They're much easier to use. So let's get going with our test spot. All right, so we've got our test spot here ready to go. We're gonna use the top edge of the uh, driver's side fender here. Uh, I feel it's got a good angle with the above shop lights and uh, some natural light behind us that I can see really, really well. And I'm hoping the camera is gonna pick it up really well too. We've got our timer here ready to go. I'm going to use a stopwatch because I want to kind of watch and see where we are around the two to three minute mark. We've got our coating and so we're going to just take the lid off We're going to pop that little top and again before we do that we want to make sure we shake it up really well. Then we're going to pop the top and apply some drops to the applicator. Now the first time I do it when the applicator is dry, I usually like to add a few more, a few extra drops, just to make sure we've got enough product, make sure there's nothing on the applicator. <clears throat> and then we're just going to apply, do this section here, and I'm not even seeing it really. Actually, going to put a little bit more because, again, we got a dry applicator. We want to make sure we've got enough. All right, so let's start our timer, and uh, let's see if I can see any rainbowing in the area. Now this stuff reeks. This stuff stinks really bad. So just be mindful of that if you're gonna buy this stuff. 
Now this is a 30 milliliter bottle. I don't believe they make a bottle larger than that. Some companies you can get a uh, uh, consumer grade coating in a 50 milliliter bottle. So I hope I have enough. We're doing a full size Toyota Tundra today. I hope I have enough coating to do the whole thing. So we'll see. We'll see how far the 30 milliliters will go. So we're at 39, 40 seconds. I don't see any rainbowing yet. Now I know I put enough product on the surface. So I should be seeing something by now. We're almost at a minute and a half. And it is again fairly warm out, so I feel like I should be seeing something. I'm not. It's basically totally clear. It's very difficult to see actually. There's a little bit of a liquid texture on the surface. That's really all you can see when you put the lights at a 45 degree angle to your eyes. So we're at two minutes, a little over two minutes. Again, no rainbowing. Now we're, while we're waiting, uh, the, the uh, buff off removal towel that they provide for you. If I were you, I would invest in a few more high quality towels, uh, some nice coating removal towels from the rag company. Um, a, a nice, like a pearl, like a low mat or a low pile pearl weave microfiber from the rag company and then a high pile high GSM real fluffy one for I like to do two removals one with the low pile and then come back with the fluffy one after to remove this is kind of a mix between both so you can use this if you want but uh, you may not be able to get around your whole vehicle with just this one towel uh, I recommend getting at least one or two more uh, the rag company or I'm sorry um, the uh, the last coat also makes nice towels that come with one side is a low pile and the other side is a high pile. They're very nice towels. Anyway, so we're all over three minutes and let me bring you in a little closer with the camera. Now, I'm not sure what the camera is picking up and what it's not picking up, but maybe you can see the texture in the, uh, in the sheen of the surface. You can see the liquid texture of where we applied it, but there is no rainbowing. I know you're not seeing rainbowing in the camera because I'm not seeing rainbowing in person. So it's been, you can see the timer. It's been almost five minutes. So we're gonna see how easy this stuff is to remove after five whole minutes. And it comes off very easily. So that flash time, again, like I said, is very loose. It's not hard and fast whatsoever. You're gonna put this stuff on. You could probably coat the whole side of the vehicle or the whole vehicle before you come back and remove this stuff. So with a consumer grade coating, uh, again, you're gonna buff it down with one side and then you're gonna flip the towel over just like that and then buff again. Now just keep remembering which side you used for which. So the flash time they give you is most likely a bonding time, not really a flashing time, but a bonding time that it needs at least that much time to bond to the paint before you buff it off. It's not that it's gonna be impossible to remove if you wait longer than those times that they tell you, but that's just a bonding time. So you wanna wait at least that time. So I think I'm gonna wait a good, at least five minutes. So that tells me that I can do this whole fender I can do the door, I can probably do the passenger side door before I come back and start removing this stuff. So with that being said, we've tested an area, we've done our test spot, we know how this stuff performs, we know how it reacts, we know what kind of visual feedback it's going to give us. Let's start working our way around the whole vehicle. Now something I forgot to mention earlier is that, see on my hands I am using the supplied gloves and they're good gloves. I would highly recommend using them. You do not want this stuff getting on your skin. Anything with a ceramic property, SiO2, silica, you do not want in your body. And we are working in a very well ventilated garage. You want to work in a ventilated area. If, if not ventilated, then wear a respirator mask. 
Now the nice thing again about using a coating like this with the uh, extended flash time or really loosey-goosey flash times is that I can do this whole hood before I have to come back and buff it off. Because like we showed on the test spot, it doesn't really dry. Not anytime soon. So again, those flash time numbers are really more for curing, I imagine, than flashing. Because you're still going to be able to remove it easily once it's flashed or once that flash time is up. Also, a tip, say this is my given application area right here. I'm going to start going front to back this way first. So I want to put a stripe right down the middle of that area going the other way and then do my coating across that for my first crosshatch application. This will allow each uh, pass to pick up that original line. So distributing the coating more evenly, more thoroughly. Okay, so I've not only gone ahead and coated the whole hood, but I actually went ahead and just did the whole front end. I did all the paint work on the bumper, the headlights, uh, the little filler panels that are between the bumper and the headlights, all that stuff, anything that's blue on the front end, uh, besides the fenders, I coated it. And then I set a timer for an extra minute. So this coating has been on there for well over five minutes, probably maybe closer to 10 minutes uh, on the hood itself. So let's see how easily it comes off now. So after almost 10 minutes of flash time, the coating is still super easy to buff and to level. At this point in time, it should definitely be bonded to the surface. And I can tell that the carriers have definitely fully evaporated. And again, the coating on the surface is barely visible. It seems to be almost self-leveling. Whatever high spots are there really are leveling down with minimal effort. Now the front of this truck is wrapped. It's got a clear bra on it. And it looks like the coating is doing just fine on the clear, clear bra, the vinyl wrap. So if you've got vinyl wrap, clear bra on your car or vinyl wrap anywhere else, then you should be just fine using the Armor Shield 9. All right, so now I want to bring you into the hood here. I want to show you a couple high spots. This is a term that we use to denote a coating that has not been properly buffed off, properly leveled. So now across the hood, you can see those spots right there. It's not a uniform finish. There we go. You can kind of see that. Now this coating has been on there for a good 10 minutes or so. And to demonstrate just how easy a consumer grade coating really is, we're going to go ahead and just buff this down here. And there we go. No more high spots. And you might see a little pitting or a little imperfection in the vinyl wrap, but that's in the vinyl wrap, that's not in the coating. No more high spots. So again, to demonstrate just how easy it is to install a consumer grade coating, let's look on the paint itself. You can see, oh, there's one right there. You can see it right there. Some unevenness in the coating. And let's buff that down. And voila, you can see no more high spot and a nice uniform finish across that area that I just buffed down. So hopefully with that little demonstration, you see uh, why or what the main difference is between a consumer grade coating and a professional grade coating. This being a consumer grade coating, it's gonna be a lot easier to use. Now the downside to that is that usually the consumer grade coatings are not gonna last or be nearly as durable in a harsh environment as a professional grade ceramic coating. So there's always a trade-off. You gotta decide what's more important to you. All right, now I wanna see how well this stuff performs on glass. On glass, I'm seeing the rainbow effect. I did not see it on the paintwork, but on the glass, I'm seeing it rainbow just a little bit. So again, this coating has been on the windshield for about five minutes. Let's see how easy it comes off. And it comes off just as easy as it did on the paint. All 
Okay, so now I'm gonna show you just how easy this stuff really is to use. Flash times, pfft, there is no flash time with this stuff. So I'm gonna go down the whole driver's side of the vehicle and I'm not gonna remove the coating at all. I'm gonna do all the body panels. I'll probably throw a little on the glass also, do the mirror uh, right to the back tailgate. And then I'll come back and buff it off. I'll even keep a timer to see how long it takes me to do it so I can see what kind of time frame we're working on. And again, illustrate just how easy this stuff is to use. Now I am pushing my working area just a little bit bigger than I normally would here. I've only got a 30 milliliter bottle to do this whole truck. So I'm kind of pushing the amount of coating that I'm using here just to make sure I have enough to do the whole vehicle. But I don't think I'm stretching it too far where I'm gonna compromise its durability and its longevity. Okay, so I went down the whole driver's side of the truck and it took me about nine minutes, nine to 10 minutes to, to get the whole side done. So now let's see how easy it is to remove after about 10 minutes. All right, so I just finished buffing down the whole driver's side. So all in all, that took me about seven minutes to do that. So that means it took less than 20 minutes to coat and then buff down one whole full side of a full-size pickup truck. Now, to be safe, maybe push it another couple of minutes to make sure the coating is bonded properly. It took about 10 minutes to um, apply it. And then the coating on the tail end of the of the section you just did you might want to let that sit for another two or three minutes before you start buffing off at the beginning of this section or the the area that you did so again depending on the size of the area you're doing all at once like this this is a that's a big size I really wanted to push to the limits um, what we could do with this stuff like I said at the beginning we could probably uh, coat the whole vehicle and then come back and start buffing it off but I don't really want to take that chance, so we're just going to stick with one side at a time. But again, this stuff is really easy to use. I'm not sure what that says about its longevity long term. It doesn't mean or say anything good in my experience, but we'll see over time. I'm going to do updates on this thing every six months to see how it's holding up. So again, we'll see. So off camera, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this truck. I'll let you know how long it takes to do the tailgate and then the other side the passenger side of the truck it is one or two o'clock on the nose right now so let's see how long it takes i'll see you in just a flash okay so i've gone around the rest of the truck i did the tailgate and then the whole passenger side of the vehicle and i had just barely enough i totally emptied this thing there's nothing left in here. Uh, 30 milliliters was just barely enough. And like I said before, I had to kind of stretch it a little bit to get to that point. Maybe I used a little bit too much at the beginning on the hood and on the roof and so on, uh, the front end. And it is now 2.37. So it took exactly 37 minutes to do the tailgate and the whole passenger side of the vehicle. So that's about, I'd say about 40 to 45 percent of the vehicle so in reality a full-size pickup truck if you're not moving a camera around like i am and doing other little things 37 minutes i say that's pretty good for 40 to 45 percent of the vehicle so let's say you take conservatively with maybe some water breaks bathroom breaks say three hours to do a full-size pickup truck like this now that's just the coating that's not your prep work. That's not all that. I started about 8.30 this morning on my prep work. So it's about, let's call it three o'clock to be conservative to 8.30. So you're talking about six and a half hours to prep and coat a full-size pickup truck. That's really good. If you're a professional or maybe you're just starting out in the detailing business and you're looking to offer an easy ceramic coating 
uh, service for your customers, something that you don't need to be certified for, and something that's not going to take you two or three days to, to do all the prep work and then the coding, this might be a good viable option for you. You can do it in one day. Now again, the polishing, I did not polish this whole vehicle. I only spot polished it. And then I coated the vehicle. So if you do a full polish on the vehicle, you're probably pushing another maybe hour and a half to two hours on a vehicle like this. So, but still not terrible for one full day and only a few hours to coat. And I'm talking conservatively at a few hours, a few hours to coat an entire full-size pickup truck. Now, if you're working on anything smaller, it's gonna take you less time. Just keep that in mind. So again, that's a plus for this product. And it looks really good. Well, like I said before, the looking good part and the amazing part after the fact, a lot of that has to do with your preparation. So that being said, this truck, this Voodoo Blue special edition color from a few years ago, it looks absolutely beautiful. My client is gonna love it. Uh, especially for the fact that he had this done for free. So I offered this to him for free because he's a friend of mine and uh, I needed a test vehicle and he was willing to volunteer his test vehicle for a free ceramic coating. Who wouldn't do that, right? He'll be happy with it. I'm happy with the results. Again, my final thoughts are it was super, super easy to use. A little, maybe even a little too easy to use. Um, we'll see how the ease of use translates to longevity and durability. This truck lives outside 100% of the time. The only time it sees any garage time is if I'm working on it, if I detail it, maybe one to two times a year. And this truck also gets used for work. The bottom line is it does get used every day. It gets driven every day and it does sit outside every day all year round. So today is July 5th, 2022. So we're gonna come back in about six months. Let's see, so the middle of the winter, I'd like to come back and do a, a maintenance wash on it to see how the uh, coating is holding up after some harsh conditions. So we're going to see uh, both heavy heat uh, exposure, UV exposure for the rest of the summer. And then we're going to see some cold and snow exposure, salt and brine on the roads exposure over the uh, first part or the first half of the uh, late fall, early winter. So we'll get a good see out of the next six months and how this stuff is going to hold up long term. Avalon King does advertise this stuff anywhere from two to five years. Um, two years being a car that gets hammered, that's probably hardly ever taken care of. Five years would be the absolute best. I'm gonna say that's gonna be a garage queen, a car that sits in the garage for the majority of its life and gets maintained uh, very well and regularly. So on your average daily driver, let's be honest, a coating like this that's relatively inexpensive and that's very easy to use, that's very user and consumer friendly, is marketed towards people like you and I, uh, blue collar working stiffs, people that use their car every day. Uh, it sits outside the majority of the time, even if you have a garage. They want a coating that's easy to use, it's gonna give them some decent longevity and um, doesn't have a lot of risk to it, which this coating has really like no risk. Like I said, you could probably come back two days later and still buff off any high spots. Maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but you get the point. I'd say this competes really well with CarPro C-Quartz line, um, your Adams graphene ceramic coating, that stuff is pretty easy to use also. Uh, the Gion consumer grade coatings, uh, Jade ceramic coatings, these are all fairly easy to use coatings that uh, are not gonna break the bank and are not gonna present a whole lot of risk or require a, a high level of experience or skill level. So again, I'm impressed. This stuff is probably even easier to use than those other consumer grade coatings that I just mentioned. The only thing that I do not like about this product is that they tell you, Avalon King tells you that it's gotta stay dry for two whole days. 48 hours. I don't like that. I don't think that's practical at all. Again, like I said, this product is marketed towards people that have cars that predominantly live outside. So you've got to make sure if you're going to apply this, you've got to make sure you either have a, a friend with a garage that you can put this thing in the garage for two days and just leave it there and let this stuff cure or plan for the weather to install it where it's not going to get rained on for two days. Now I'd say that you can install this outside. Um, if you can do it in a garage, I'd say that's better given the long flash time 
this stuff takes a long time to, uh, to cure and it stays wet and workable for a long period of time. So that presents a challenge with um, being outside. You have, that's a greater amount of time for dust and dirt to float and get in it. So I would recommend installing this in a garage if you can. Anyway, that's my take on this stuff. Look for the link to purchase this stuff for yourself in the product description uh, section below. If you have any questions or comments about this product, maybe you've used it and you'd like to share your experience, please don't hesitate to comment or leave that question in the comment section below and I'll answer it to the best of my ability as soon as I possibly can. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to give us a like right down below. Please don't hesitate to hit that big red subscribe button right down below also. And as always, I'm Seth with Turner Mobile Detailing and I'll see you in the next video.